Okay, call the meeting to order. Is there any additions or changes to the agenda as presented? Uh, yes. I have a, uh, a request for the board to uh, write a letter to VTrans requesting a uh, reconsideration of speed limits on Route 100C and uh, a request, uh, another facility use request uh, for Legion Field for the Memorial Housing Partnership. I can be more specific. Um, no, I think that's good enough. The part of it is we don't have a record of so I'm just making some things to okay. purchase to pass by the board of the purchase. Uh, and maybe the a clarification that we we have to modify item one of my report uh, for setting the annual tax rate. Uh, we're going to discuss the roadblocks for setting the tax rate tonight. Okay. Well, that'll just be part of the tax rate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anything else? I think Mike sent me an email. He's going to be late. I'm not sure about Kyle. Kyle's in the next one. Oh, she probably won't be here then. I forgot all about that. Mike. Hey, Mike is here. Is the board prepared to uh, approve the meeting minutes of June 7th? June 3rd, June 17th, sorry. I apologize, uh, it should be June, it should be June 17th, not June 3rd. There's, June 17th, there's one coming up correction I have to make on page two. It says, yeah, Ned asked if we can make sure that people living in the trailer are provided with social services. I just want to be clear and I wasn't asking them to be provided with social services. Connected to social services, and then we can apply that we're looking to okay. provide that with some assistance. So we know that. Anything else? Any other changes in the meeting there? No. We're going to approve with the suggested changes of that. So, motion to the second. Lacking a second, the motion will die. I wasn't present. Mike wasn't present at the start of the year. Yeah, you started too soon. That clock <laughs> was a little bit early. I'm not going to argue with the chairman. Are you uh, comfortable seconding the motion? For approving the meeting minutes with the changes Nat identified? Yeah, why not? Okay. Motion is second. Any more discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And you're abstaining. Vote three, vote four. Tax rates. Late this afternoon, I got an email from the state tax department stating that the final education property tax rate for 141 out of 259 towns are now available. And we're not one of them. We are not one of them. No of the Ruan North towns are in this at all. So I called up um, Kim Newton from my party to the treasury. She didn't, she didn't have her, and she didn't know of any reason why it would be me, because we passed our budgets right. a long time ago. And she said that the business manager and another person that they said <clears throat> the rest of the towns will be published in the coming days as they are currently under review for budget edit checks by um, supervisory business managers and the education <coughs> agency of education and we're not waiting for a reprisal so, so that's something so I don't know if we can. I sent um, the business manager at Google North an email, and I got one of those odd responses. She's out of town until July 15th. 
So we have no idea when we're going to get that money. How late can we go for the set the tax rate? We got some tax bills. Using last year's uh, school taxes, there's about an eight, just eight, seven increase in the rate, which includes forty-five thousand for the uh, preparation program. They had plenty of time to take care of that, didn't they? Yeah. They're supposed to have all the towns done by June thirty. What are they doing up there? That's kind of ridiculous. Okay. Uh, Rosemary. Did you want to do? I I'd assume that would be through e your part. Okay. Tom is here for a liquor license for the Homer Bats and Nets. Oh. Do you have a, your application? Completed? I do. How are you? Good. Good. <laughs> um, you know, that to us now if you have it. Sure. Sure, I do have an outside consumption I'd like to drop off tomorrow morning if that's all right. Okay. I don't have time to fill that out before getting here. Uh, but this is the application. It's been a busy weekend. Tom, how are you? Tom. No, Tom. Johnson president. I'm Doug Moldy. Doug, pleasure. Mike Dunham. Michael, hello, Ryan. John Eric. Johnson president. This is Tommy. Tom. Old Tom. Tom. Thanks. So you have a good track record, obviously. And more so, you've not had any problems with violations? Or I do. I have a business there. We've been open eight years. Um, worked very well with the town and um, and the police. Richard Keith, um, if there's any question at all, please um, reach out to the town of Morristown, to the police department, um, to the Department of Liquor Control. Uh, Mr. Patrick Ross is my investigator. Um, uh, I'd really like to open up a nice food establishment here with... Um, you know, inside and outside dining, mm -hmm. kind of focusing on a burger, among other things. Um, and I'd like to have spirits, uh, beer and wine. But I believe I can operate the premises safely. Um, and I believe it could be a great asset to this town. Now, Tor, assumptions on the death there, or is it, is it beyond that big? Um, well, immediately I'd like to use the outside deck, but really looking at the front of the building, and I, I think I'd have to talk to somebody in zoning, but where the front porch is and that side ice cream window, I'd really like to put an, a deck in right there to have um, some dining in the front of the building. I think it might look make the building look very nice from the uh, from the road outside, make it look a little bit less like a double wide, a little bit more like a like a nice dining restaurant. <coughs> a lot of things I want to do in the building, but the first thing I I'd like to do is, is get it open and start generating some uh, some income. So, well, what's the definition of outdoor seating right right now as a, as the building stands as, for that? For the uh, there's a back patio yeah. um, that I'm repainting right now, and that'll be the, the extent of the. I don't think I need any other outdoor seating at this time. I'd like to go over the premises with my liquor investigator before I do anything of any kind aside from that deck. And so when I put in my outside consumption permit, uh, it would be for the back patio. And then I'd like to go down there with Patrick Ross and walk the premises and um, you know, kind of do that with the state, um, if that's all right with everybody. And I would like to do some events at some point. We do a lot of events in Morrisville, a lot of them for charity. We've probably done about um, 25 different charity events for Habitat for Humanity, for the United Way, for various um, things. Um, uh, by putting on a music show, I'd like to do some of that here as well, because there is nice fields for that. So uh, within the um, noise regulations, 
that kind of thing. I don't know how you all feel about it. We're prepared to approve the liquor license. Approve of conditions. Approve as is. in August. We're waiting Everybody's looking at me. Yeah, we're waiting for your motion. <laughs> <laughs> I make the motion that we uh, give this new business their proper liquor license that they're asking for, uh, no conditions. Or send the normal letter. Normal letter. Yeah. Yeah. We have motion, we have second. second. And our normal letter is we just reserve the right that if you know you got in trouble serving to minors, that we would uh, reserve the right to uh, put uh, revoke your license for a certain time period, as well as the state. We do have an all liquor. As you should. Any other discussion? Did your motion include the outside consumption when the permit comes in? It can. It can. It will. Well, I'm outside. Oh, well, well, you Okay. Outside consumption on the back deck. On the back deck. Yes. Okay. So, so that's not to say if you expand or you need to do something different than the on the back deck, the back will still be open for discussion. I, I certainly will, and I look forward yeah. to it because I'd really like to get that front deck in. And we're just going to see if it's possible. Cool. And we don't have zoning out there, so that's going to be a short conversation. Where there's no. Okay. Right, thank you. <laughs> I think it's great that somebody's going back in there. Place is 56 seconds from my home. Um, it's on my way to my other business. I really think I could make a nice restaurant there. Great. And uh, and I love this town, so thank you for giving me a chance. Vote. You have more? Yeah, I, I would just like to have the application first, or just that the application would be the same parties and uh, same identity of the, uh, the owner, etc. when you submit the application. That we're approving in advance of it being submitted. Oh, for the course. outside. Um, everything's there, but the outside consumption piece of paper, I just didn't have time to, pick, to, to print it out before I had to pick this guy up, so I apologize. Um, I'll have it first thing in the morning over uh, over here. Okay. Um, I'm the sole owner of the business, so. Um, and it, Are you buying the building? I'd like to. I have a contract to buy it within the next year. Cool. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is get it open. Uh, yeah. I'm going to lease it from previous owners. Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. Any more discussion? All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and sign this, Mr. Chairman. Yep, we all. Yeah, I know. I just want to permission to put my signature. <laughs> like you need my signature. Well, <laughs> you, you get it through then. Well, I got to act like I need it. Yeah, I know. I'll put it that way. Anything else, Rosemary? That's all. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? <laughs> if not, Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Michael. On the agenda is the Community Health Center. I'm not sure who's taking the lead on this. So thank you. We hadn't prepared a presentation per se, but more of a discussion. Oh, okay. I'm happy to yeah. describe it. one part of the project right from the top. Okay, is that? Yeah, that's fine. Great day. You're just here to offer help. Okay. My name is Carol Maloney. I'm just about yeah. Carol Maloney, and I'm here on behalf of uh, Community Health Services in Wild Valley, Chesley. Oh. Um, so I'm Greg Pedro Greg. from uh, Johnson. <laughs> you, you run an excavator in the water? I can. Yeah. <laughs> A big long one that pulls ice out of the river. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for being here. Uh, inviting us to have the conversation. Brian's been part of our conversations for a while. We've, we've had several meetings over the last year, really, in, in um, Johnson about health services here, and especially since Dr. Rogers retired. And um, Cheslov got hooked in 
in the fall, and we've had a couple of meetings here with a variety of stakeholders, including town and village uh, representatives, and the COP, the university, and Laraway, and uh, Mark County Planning, and some private folks, and school folks. And we felt we were going to go after a grant this winter for from the health centers to expand into Johnson. There was a federal opportunity, and it turned out we weren't eligible for that grant. So we kind of turned our eyes towards the school, because that was an, the initial conversation was about uh, partnering with the school. The leadership there was really interested. And um, so and since then, the, the teachers have come up to the table with their own interests and, and resources and, and ideas. And, uh, broader group, and I'll let him, Greg speak for himself, but so basically what we have are two parallel and connected projects. So they're different, but they're obviously connected. Ches Love is the common denominator, and the children and families of Johnson are the common denominator as well. What I want you to know is that Ches Love did a little bit of a dive into it. South Services, I don't know how much y'all know about <coughs> Ches Love, and I don't, he certainly ask questions. I, I'm not an expert at there. I've only been there for less than a year. But um, they have over 2,000 registered patients from Johnson. So two-thirds of your community are registered patients of Chesla. That means they're either getting primary care, adult or children's, dental, neurology, substance or mental health treatment services. Um, yeah, those are five. So pediatric and uh, neurology, dental, and behavioral or, and substance services. So over 2,000 patients. 346 of those are children under age 12, or under age 13, 12 and under. So the school is kind of the, the, the focus, the short-term focus right now. Uh, just I just told Brian when I came in last Monday night, the Memorial North Modified University approved $27,000 to renovate the, the room in the school. They, they have cost estimates that go between twenty-five dollars and $32,000. Chesla will contribute the balance of up to five if there's a, if it goes over $27,000. So what they're doing basically is taking a, a large room and dividing it in half, leaving about a 420 square foot health center in the school for school students only. And that will be a center in what it looks like right now, the plan, is to renovate that space into uh, sort of there's an exam room so we would have a, a primary care provider either a doctor or a physician's assistant these are existing staff at Cheslev now who would be deployed over here one to two days a week providing primary care on an appointment basis for the most part they have a full-time nurse now or you do in your communities we have a full-time nurse there now she sees on average seven percent of your of the students every day you have somewhere between 8 and 15 percent of students don't even have a doctor of record. Almost 10 percent have never seen a dentist. Um, so you're going to have primary care there one to two days a week is the plan. You're going to have behavioral health which is mental health um, probably two to three days a week and then probably on a rotating basis every other week, mate, depending on the need and how it, how it, you know, these are all subject to change, but there'll be a dental hygienist in there from the dental clinic. So you have a combination of primary care, preventive care and primary care, um, dental hygiene services, and behavioral health or mental health services on the road out of that same space. So Cheslov would uh, have the uh, burden of of putting furniture, equipment, which come to almost $10,000 um, for the basic equipment for all those services in that facility. Um, the school wants to do the renovate. They're having trouble finding a contractor. And you can uh, maybe have some influence on that. Yeah. That's what Dylan said. He can't, they're having trouble. You know, everybody, you got a short window here, as you know. I'm not too good at building. I'm basically, I have big holes and very stuff. 
<laughs> it would start there. And... <laughs> That's kind of what I wish. <laughs> you probably know people who do other kind of work. I might know. <laughs> um, so anyway, once they, they want to do that renovation, which isn't a huge project, but it, it should be done when students aren't in the building, because it'll be fairly disruptive with banging. And, you know, it can, and for a small project, as you know, it encompasses a whole bunch of subs, because you got to do IT, you got to do electrical, you got to do sprinkler, you got to do, you know, heating, ventilating, air conditioning, you got to, and you have just the basic carpentry stuff. So it, it really is a, it's complex and just involves a lot of coordination of a lot of pieces. So we're not sure um, how quickly that, if it doesn't happen this summer, we're looking at possibly Thanksgiving break or something before that renovation can be done. So it could be January before that place is operational, but that's, with the board approval last week of that renovation, we're on track with uh, the next step, which is getting, and Dylan from the supervisory unit will deal with all that, you know, contracting work that they have to do. They have to put it out to bid and all that stuff. So I wanted to let you know about that project. We're very excited that that's moving forward. And I know there were a lot of questions, but again, that's, that's for students at Johnson Elementary, pre-K to grade six. Their families will be served only so much as the kids um, for the behavior, for the mental health stuff, if families are part of that service or get referred to the other uh, clinics at Chesla. If they're not patients, current patients of Chesla, which some number of them won't be, the doctor or provider there will c coordinate with their existing. So if they're a patient at Cambridge or somewhere else, they won't have to switch, but they, there'll have to be coordination of services through their primary care, because you can only bill. It's a billable service. We'll be looking for grants. We're writing grants to help with some of those startup costs, and we're looking for other funding to help sustain some of the non-billable services, because there's so much that the school would benefit from. You know, imagine a mental health person consulting with the after-school program around behavioral stuff, and then advising teachers around Imagine the doctor or coming at night to offer a parent education class to people around what's normal development stuff. So imagine the providers working with the nutrition folks at the school or the physical, you know, teachers and some other creative ways. None of those things would be billable. So they're all above and beyond just the core service. But we have, you know, we have a pretty big vision of what, what could happen. But we'll start with the core services. So I'm, you know, we have a community, we're involved in the community product conversation as well. But I wanted to just see if you have questions or comments so about that the administrative school. building, is that off-site somewhere? Yeah, that'll all, it'll all be um, electronically connected. So their records, medical records will be accessible through the, here, mm -hmm. through their system, through Cheslov system. And um, yeah, all the billing happens at the Morrisville office. Okay. Yeah. Is there, um, is there uh, any program or something that you're copying, or is, is there a template for this type of thing in schools? It's a great question. There is no other community-based, uh, school-based health center in northern Vermont, nor above Route 15. Um, well, in Moyle, Franklin, or the three counties of the Northeast Kingdom, there's, when you ski has a school-based clinic, they coordinate, they have providers from UVM and from the Community Health Center of Burlington taking turns in the school at Winooski. Um, South Royalton has the kind of uh, model program. They've been going for 20 years. They have a school-based health center down there. Bennington, uh, they were actually one of the initial folks. Remember, I was working in Barton back in the early 90s at a health center, and um, they had set up the initial model at the Molly Stark School in Bennington for what they call the full service school with a dentist and a doctor full time in the school. Um, so there are limited models and there are national models as well. But the state health department has, is starting a, um, a group to share best practice among all the school health center people in Vermont. So it's just a handful, but there are some. They all look a little different as Vermont. Do you have do you have the staffing lined up if, when the work is done? 
uh, some of you may know Dr. Ballou, who's been to some of our meetings. She's the long-standing pediatrician in Lamoille. Actually, she's the only pediatrician doctor in Lamoille County. Um, and she is absolutely committed to this. Uh, she's not a young woman. She's been doing this work for 40 years. Um, and this is her passion. She is so excited about getting in there part-time to provide this service. Her vision is actually to be linked to the high school as well because we have one of the lowest in the state. We have the lowest rate of well child visits in the state, in Lamont County. And my guess is, and we don't have it broken up by town, but given the poverty rates in Johnson, I'm guessing Johnson contributes mightily to that. And what that means is our young children aren't getting preventive care at, at a rate that other Vermont kids are getting it. So we have some work to do to improve that. And she is, Dr. Ballou is absolutely committed. So yes, we have Scott McCray who couldn't be here tonight. He's the CEO and president of Cheslov. Some of you may have met him when Brian has. <clears throat> He's absolutely talking to his leadership team and um, because they'll be using existing staff because it's a part-time rotating staffing arrangement. So nobody will be here full time. So yeah, we're confident the staff are there. I thought I saw some data about the well child visit uh, for Johnson and Eden at one of our meetings. Nothing by town. Okay. They have not shared any well child visits by town. The well, for youngest kids, we're the second lowest in the state for the under for preschool age, and for adolescents, we're the lowest in the state for well child. So the number of kids who are getting to the doctor regularly just for preventive care. I think this is a great idea. Um, when I arrived in Vermont way long ago, I was sent by legal aid to go home in a dentist's office out of uh, an Air Force base or something in Maine for the similar type purpose because this is still such a tremendous need and, and Johnson students will really profit and I'm glad that uh, Cheslov and our, and our school district is focusing on this need. It's, it's, it's a tremendous need. The principal has been over by David has really offered many different options and the facility is really excited about this and, and Pat Gallagher has been gone above and beyond as well to move this forward and to, you know, you all heard about a couple of, was it a couple of months ago when there was a little flurry of activity on the, on the social media <laughs> plane and uh, Pat's invested a lot of time and energy talking individually to a lot of parents. And Dave hosted a, a meeting, a private a meeting at the school for parents, anyone who wanted to come and ask questions. We then went to the school board meeting in May to address the community concerns. So there have been some, but we've she's heard nothing in the last month or so. We've kind of hopefully those are reasons now have been responded to adequately. And then the other half. The other half is uh been talking with Cheslov about the uh, lower parking lot in the, at the church, uh, putting a small building in there that would be a full service mm -hmm. uh, health care. One of the things I'm not sure you mentioned, but the Cheslov, it's a federally qualified okay. health center. <coughs> so the good thing about that is they, they have to serve everybody. If you have insurance or you don't have insurance or it's called, I don't know a lot about it a little bit. It's a sliding scale, it sounds like, on how much you can afford. And if you can't afford anything, then it's free. Which is really, that's what this, I think that's what this community would benefit from. So that's kind of what Kirk Myers up about it. It's a mission, yeah, it's a nonprofit, and its mission is, and it's part of a federal system, so it gets, Jesuit gets federal grant money to help cover some of the costs of under and uninsured patients. So it does have a sliding fee scale according to federal. And it has to meet federal quality guidelines and you know, so it's part of this whole federal system and there are 12 of these in Vermont. Right. You can't really turn anybody away. You can't turn anyone away. In the school you can. In the school we can because it's a different site. But in a community health center right. you can't. Kids you're working on. Kids, there. yeah. So this would be a different uh, kind of along the same lines. Uh, I think it's going to take quite a bit to get that going, don't you? Uh, yeah. Maybe We're thinking two years, yeah. We're thinking years. a couple years out. It's a reasonable timeline. It takes a while to get the grants. And, you know, and I don't think it would take too long.
wanting to get the building up, but maybe a year or less. But uh, we can't really start building until we know that the funds are there to uh, make it sustainable. So uh, we we thought we'd work with these folks if we can and if the grants come through. And I think it's a good idea with the church. Uh, it looks like I don't know. Do you want to talk about the church at all? Sure. Yeah. The uh, chapel floor we like to uh, use as a uh, like a event center to raise funds be like maybe uh, we bring in a band or bring in a speaker or bring in you know uh, some sober parties where people could come and that uh, were recovering from alcohol or drugs and, and be safe and, uh, you know, even if somebody local in town needed to have a funeral because they couldn't afford one at the funeral home, you know, we maybe put it up for a donation or something like that. So that's kind of what the top is looking like. Uh, uh, the recovery center has already contacted me about a, uh, an event they want to have there in the beginning of September. So, uh, and then the the uh, basement, um, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, we met with a company that does sober living and they have six or eight uh, uh, different houses throughout the state. They came up and looked and we told them what we'd like to do upstairs and we thought about some living quarters downstairs but they they said that's not a very good place for people trying to recover because there's so much activity upstairs. If there wasn't, then you know it would probably work as a sober living house. But I think that our vision is that the chapel part of the church lot floor could really benefit the community. And with Jenna's promise, uh, we need some source of fundraising. So if, uh, you know, somehow we think that space would, would help there. And uh, maybe dinners, and, uh, my sister's got some plans. And we are going through an Act 250 there, just so you know. Uh, I'm not, I don't know, a lot of them have already commented back that there's really no need of them being involved, so it's coming. So that's, that's our plan for the church. And, uh, you know, we'll start working on it pretty quick here, painting it, getting the floors in order, and getting it ready. And hopefully we'll get an Act 250 permit. <laughs> <laughs> so we have investigated some other areas for sober living, as you know, uh, Jenna's promise. That's kind of one of the goals that we want to accomplish. Talk to a few people on that street, uh, and we might we might be able to work something out with some of those folks. Um, our ultimate dream would be to pretty much make a lot of that street a sober community. Uh, at least some of the places where we know there's some trouble now. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that's a little ways probably down the road. But the church will be the place we start. And uh, we've talked to some people in the street, on that street. And, uh, I'm not sure they quite understand sober, what sober living is. Uh, and so we've got a little work to do there. Uh, but we're, we're going to keep working on it. Uh, I think some of what's, I don't know how much you know about that street, but there's some things going on there that really aren't good for a community. And uh, we think having people that are trying to change their life and recover is better than some of the things that are going on now. So, but that's easier said than to explain. So yep. we're going to keep working on it. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're up against. And then, uh, you know, in the parking, in, in the Act 250 permit, we are permitting a building of about 3,500 square feet bottom so um, you know 
we had a Sam Rosiano uh, donated his services for that all that permit fees project. Not the fees, but getting it ready. So we were talking, told him what we talked about. He said, well, uh, let's put it all in one. And then if we never build the building, then we never build the building. Done some good things already in a short time. Yeah, you got the building, the church building. Yeah, that I think that part the building's gonna really service the community. I really do. Um, you know, we could even maybe have some. I mean, I'll be looking at, at you guys and town people to see what kind of ideas they have for some of that space. Maybe there's a spot for a, some after school activities or whatever you know the building is paid for you know Jenna's life insurance paid for the building so we don't Don and I we're this isn't a money thing for us mm -hmm. it's that building is to be used to, to help other people and, uh, and you know we're, we're kind of happy at that time we stumbled into that at the right time I think unfortunately but uh, so we, we want the community's feedback on what else we can do there in, in, in the school season or the winter or the spring or even the summertime. I think there's a, I think there's a lot of opportunities. Make, make okay. sure you keep in mind that we do have a revolving loan fund that there could be uh, opportunities there for you that you right. could qualify. And depending on what you do, um, like the church building, uh, Although that's probably tax exempt, but we do have a tax stabilization uh, ability uh, for the town. Mm -hmm. um, and if you create so many jobs, which maybe with the health center, then you it would qualify with the school tax too, which is the biggie. But right. Those are just things down the road to keep in mind. Yeah. Well, think when the church was there it was tax exempt but I would assume now that we're going to be paying taxes and that's what we think right. so unless you guys want to just wave that here tonight that's okay <laughs> <laughs> no I'm just joking it is you know we, we understand that yeah. you know. uh, we I talked to Brian a little bit about some different things and uh, we've got some other ideas that are uh, floating around here but I don't Thing. they're concrete enough to really mm -hmm. talk about yet but maybe they will be by your next meeting maybe if people have ideas how do they get them to you or is, is there a form to communicate uh, yeah jennaspromise.org has a we have our website up and uh, there's a, an email on there and a phone number or mm -hmm. local people can just call me if you know, at home or my business. They, anybody that seems to want to find me usually does. Mm -hmm. So we may have some better communication on that uh, coming up. Um, but right now we're uh, we're concentrating on the Act 250 permit, getting that moving, see what people think. I think most of the people we talked to are okay with with this plan. They were. A little shy about the uh, sober living house right there, mm -hmm. but uh, it just takes time. We got to educate people. You know, I mean, these folks are, you know, they're having a tough time and trying to recover is very, very difficult. And, uh, our community here in Wyoming uh, County and the state, you know, we've got to help these folks. You know, we've got to understand. That they want to get better, you know, but it's so easy to fall back, right? So they need they need people like us. They really do. So that's what we're about: telling people what's going on, trying to talk about how we can help and, and uh, figure out what we can do to them. So I think Johnson's a good place to to uh, get this ball moving.
guess it would seem to me that, that uh, you know, like the plan for the school, you know, is, is directed at a great need, your plan is directed at a great need. And it's us and it's not, it's not time for, I'm not in my backyard. This is us. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. It's going to take a little time to give people the opportunity to understand that. I think, but uh, I think we're going to we're going to, be, we're going to make it through. Yeah. But they uh, they do have a little bit of that not in my backyard thing. But I don't. It's so easy to get rumors and the internet and social media gets everything stirred up. And as you know, the facts kind of go out the window and. The, Rumors keep running hard, so you know. A little bit like politics. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> yeah. But I appreciate your support in this matter, that's for sure. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things you may hear, speaking of and Frank is alluding to over the last couple of weeks we've been flooded at Chesla with uh, you know, in relation to this project in the school is there are a lot of um, rumors related to the changes at Cheslet. There have been the announcement of three doctors are leaving Morrisville family practice, three long-standing doctors who've been part of that. Uh, Dr. Kylie, I'm get their names, Christy and, is it there? Uh, oh, no. Thank you. Um, they're leaving to set up their own private practice in town. They're not leaving the area. And they serve among the three of them almost 6,000 patients. So it's a big number. Cheslov has about 16, 17,000 patients altogether with 150 employees across its system. And so those three doctors are leaving and they will ultimately be put, replaced with other providers. In fact, we're about to make an announcement that one doctor has already been signed to start. A new doctor is coming in in August. So. Cheslov is fully, is, is actually recruiting all the time. And you can imagine workforce issues are tough in all fields, but recruiting doctors to this area of the country with its pay and everything else is, is tough. So it's, a, it's an ongoing challenge. And Cheslov has just started some new strategies. But I would just want you to know that there are three doctors leaving. We know that. We are prepared for that. And this project, again, is far enough down the road that lots of things can happen in that time. And two mid-level physician assistants are leaving. One's going over to Hardwick to work at Northern Health Healthcare, another FQHC, and I think the other one's going with the doctor. So, you know that it's it's a lot. It's a big number, but it's not the end of the world. You know, we're full. Our eyes are wide open. Uh, we're recruiting. It's it's not going to impact. It'll be a, bump, a pretty significant bump in the road, but it's not going to destabilize the organization. It's a very stable, multi-million dollar uh, operation. Um, it's, I think, 13 million in revenue, 13 to 16 million, depending on the year. It's, it's not, the world is not coming to an end. It's not any penny the sky is falling in. And some people are portraying it that way. So I just want you to know that Cheslin is aware of these departures and is very optimistic that this is, something that can be dealt with and will move forward. So I just felt like you should know that because you're going to, you may have heard that. Cheslov is not folding, it's not going anywhere. It's it's here. It's kind of like running a business, I guess. Yeah, right? it, it is a business, yeah. And when people leave, you, it's how you react to it. So, exactly. You know, they're not all going to stay forever. And it's an opportunity. And some of them we don't want to. Well. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. There's that. Yeah, exactly. Anybody else? Tasha. Tasha. Oh, hi, yeah. Um, most of you know me, Tasha Wallace, Executive Director of the Royal County Planning Commission. I really came to listen, to understand more about the project. I know you've been in communication with our staff, and we're really here to help. I think that um, the issues of health and wellness and opioid addiction are really issues that regional planning commissions should be doing more about in the future. I know that Chittenden County Regional Planning Commission is very involved in the efforts up there, um, as well as Northwest. 
and so we're really making a commitment to take more of this on and this project is really just a part of that kind of larger issue because I strongly feel that there's things communities can do to help the community and residents through planning and strategic thinking and really you know looking to the future so that's just why I'm here I'll have to disclose my husband's on the Cheslet board. Uh, uh, what is his name? What is your husband's name? <laughs> uh, Kevin Goddard. Um, I, I haven't talked about this with him. It's uh, He's a wedding photographer. It's July. I probably haven't talked to him for a while. Um, but anyway, we're really here to help and we're very interested in these discussions. And we hear a lot about grant opportunities and we're happy to forward along everything that we <coughs> Big stuff has been. I usually call Seth because I know him. Guess a little bit more, but uh, yeah, it's been been helpful. Yeah. 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 We'll get the ball rolling. It's just you know, it's a pretty ball, pretty big ball to get moving. But, but it is going to take you guys have opportunities to get un unique opportunities to access funding as well that can help us as partners that could really right. move. We um we met with Senator Leahy's staff and Scott's met with folks down there as well in Washington. We another meeting set up with them next week or the week after. We had a meeting at the sales with Rich Westman, with Senator Westman, and he's committed to supporting us trying to get this in the governor's budget, some piece of this in the governor's budget for next year, and if not, then he would work with us to see about how the state might be able to support this as well. So it's going to take a lot, of people. a lot of people to pull this off. Yeah, these things are collaborative efforts. Yeah. I think one of the things that would help it would be to extend the village uh, the, the village center the design. village center yeah. yes and it wouldn't need to be extended too too far so that would be I think uh, they've made that request they? they have but this circumstances have changed a bit so we uh, have it'll it'll go through the village but they have a pretty good case to be made for, you know, things have changed and it should be considered again. And I know they're very supportive of all this, the, the village. So, yeah, I don't know them at all. But, uh, right, and our staff is always happy to help out on um, applications for village designation, downtown designation, or expanding yeah. those. I don't participate in that since I serve on the downtown board, but I'm happy to answer questions about you know, what generally works. Or doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you all others. for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> it's usually only after Mike's been talking with it. Uh, Tax rate, but is there anything else? I mean, we got wait. We got filled in by Rosemary yeah. for that. So, okay. Um. So if we're ready to move on, yeah. Uh, the next item is uh, to discuss the creation of a committee to manage the community of it. Um. So the. We've had a couple of volunteers managing it. They're doing a very good job with management, but uh, similar to the way that, you know, kind of the lesson learned with the Tuesday Night Live Committee is we had people working on behalf of the town uh, with little to no oversight and uh, not a lot of feedback. And then it came back to bite us when we had questions about their relationship with the town it might be worth our effort of forming a, a committee and empowering them now uh, while the 
it's relatively new and that that really wouldn't. Uh, How many folks is it currently involved? Uh, Jasmine and her family are the ones that I'm mostly in contact with. I know that she's got support from a handful of other families, but I I think that we can work with her about formalizing that relationship and seeing who who's willing to serve on an official committee, uh, and you know it doesn't have to meet that often or uh, much during the much at all during the off season. But and the other biggies uh, because they are starting to raise funds that they go through the office. So. Yes. Yeah, uh, Rosemary in the town are asking, acting as a fiscal agent for the of it. Right. How many members? I think we can give them a number, or we can uh, work it out with them as they go. We had the issue last time when we didn't say how many members a committee was. Uh, that they were able, or they were, we have, if we set, if we don't set a number of members, uh, we have the potential where it's very easy to interpret, it's very easy for them to reach quorum because we don't have a specified number that if it's below this, it's not quorum. So it raises the question of is it quorum or isn't it quorum when we've got two people on the committee but right now we don't have anybody on the committee we're just asking for it to form so I think that we're still okay with out sending members a number of members mr. chairman if, if I'm not mistaken I thought the main drivers of this committee are going to keep involved in this up or am I mistaken that they were just going to get it built and Wash their hands of it. As I understood, they got it built and they were training in, in that level. But this is a different thing where uh, they're having community events on some kind of a regular basis, weekly, I believe, Monday nights. Monday something. nights, they're having something. It's, it's they're raising money to pay for that. Yeah, I, I, I get all of that. It's but a little I, different. I think that when we kind of approved this in the beginning, right. we thought that. Uh, there was there was going to be a committee of the group that built it to take care of it. Now it appears as if it's falling onto the town to manage this oven. Well, that's kind of the question before us: is do we want to wash our hands of it and say that it's entirely citizen-led and we're not going to be involved, or do we want to take some ownership and retain our, our stake in it? That was very explicitly stated, what Mike said, that, that Jen would, and I think Mark was behind it. I think there are people here who would verify that that's the case. I think I remember taking it on the chin pretty hard during that meeting uh, when I stood up and said that uh, I think this is going to require a little more management that people realize after you have it built. Um, and, um, now I think people are realizing. I don't know where Jen is at with this at all, like, but she's just currently out of town. Okay. So she's not taking an active role in it now, but she has, okay. in general, still been active. But I think that I mean I think the fact remains that it, it it requires more management than just oh yeah I'll take care of it for the next three years, um, and that's that's okay. You know, that's learned, but they, they support this idea. Though I would suggest, and I want to talk to Jasmine about it, that Jasmine um, has been doing so much to, to get this thing um, really used a lot in the summer. And she's incredibly impressive with what she can accomplish, which is she sets her mind to it. So um, I want to run this past her, but since we're reconstituting the, the rec committee is going through a rejuvenation now, would this be a subset of uh, Johnson Rec? Like, the soccer club and little league and archery. I, Instead of forming a whole new committee, it's just an idea. It would be great if Johnson Rec could be a little more Parks and Rec. Right, that's kind of hopeful. It would be part of it. Ultimately, by the end of the year, we are Parks and Rec. Right, that'd be perfect. 
But we had discussed in the last meeting of the meeting before uh, some repairs that we needed to do. So whatever happened to that? That's another issue. That's who Kyle was driving that. What was a little concerning with Jasmine was she's out getting grants and raising funds to do what she's doing. So it's a little different than uh, she's not maintaining the, front of the oven or anything like that. Maybe it should be a group that does everything, whether it's a subset of the rec committee or whatever. But uh, the concern that, that came to us was when their funds were going through them and they, they automatically become town funds when it's a town uh, oven like that on our property and it needs to go through growth. Mm -hmm. So we just need to formalize it a little bit because we didn't want to have another situation like Tuesday night live where they're you know, just running rogue. But whether it's Jen or Jen or... Are you talking about giving them a budget? Town funded? No, we haven't you know, gone there at all. But I hope it doesn't get to that. Well, that was another thing that was specified. Was that there wouldn't be town money involved. But they are out getting soliciting grants and getting grants, and that's the biggest concern. It just needs to come through. Right. Go funneling yeah. through this office and have somebody who's accountable is a a representative of the town that is you know, got that appointment there. Right. That's just different than taxpayer money. Right. Pardon? It's different from taxpayer money. Yeah. yeah. It's great. I mean, ultimately, it's more than one person can can do. We have a group of people who are interested in cleaning up and making sure there's wood there and uh, you know, it's going to benefit all of us. So. so Mr. Chairman, where do you want to steer this? Well, you know, the thought was, you know, do we want to form a committee? And who would we put on it? Jasmine would probably be a likely choice, whether she's named the chair or what have you. Or she may be a committee of one right now, um, but well, that talked about a subcommittee well, on the right. That's another thought, a new direction. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to talk to Jasmine about it before we leave. I mean, she kind of had some questions for me about how this would work in her, her work in the town. Yeah, and I directed her to to you guys. I don't know if you've had conversations. A little bit, but we haven't gotten too far with it. Uh, we got basically to the point where I thought it was appropriate to talk to the, the board. You know, what is our intention? How, how do you guys run it with the rec committee? Uh, different programs, you assign somebody to take the lead on that, but yet the rec committee has the overall responsibility? Yeah, they're typically when we're, you know, when we have members. Uh, we're really short on numbers right now, but there'll be somebody who has a particular interest in soccer. Mm -hmm. A parent who really is just joined because they're really interested in skiing and they want the skiing program to go. They'll continue to support with the other programs and, and help set budget and policy and all of that. If they focus on it. But a couple of people will focus in this area and people focus in that So are your thoughts maybe trying to pull Jasmine into the fold if it was a Rec and parks type of community. That's, I mean, that's a, I think would be a, a way to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jasmine's mother has expressed some interest since she moved to Johnson recently uh, and is interested in joining the rec committee. You know, spoke with Jasmine about some other issues related to parks and playgrounds in Johnson. So, I mean, she's definitely, I could see it kind of at work. I definitely would have a conversation with the person I'm willing to actually, I should give her a call and just ask her. That sounds great. I don't know if you need action tonight on this or if we can discuss it over the summer. Right. Yeah. I think it will be premature tonight. But I think that what we need tonight is to make sure that the board is fully aware that we're acting as fiscal agent for the bread oven right now. Okay. Uh, so that 
the town is the one applying for grants and obtaining funds for yeah. the bread of it. They're yeah. doing the legwork on it, but the yeah. town is the one acting that way. That yeah. way, all the funds are you know, totally above board that we attain them, we make sure they get spent on you know, approved items. Uh, and the benefit for them is they get tax status and insurance coverage. Right. And they're eligible for grants that they wouldn't be otherwise when it's when they're not on an official committee like this, they they're not eligible for very much. I think the advantage is they know who they are and who they represent and who they're accountable to, uh, yeah. as well as this financial stuff. I think we ought to say yes, we uh, ought to have a committee and uh, we'll go about setting it up. I, I'm not at all in favor of the rec committee's involvement. I think of this as more like uh, Tuesday Night Live. I think it was a social uh, event. I don't think of it as, uh, unless the, the rec committee can shed its stripes and, and uh, uh, become adult oriented and uh, there's a whole area of outdoor recreation for adults with trails and different things like that that, that we haven't gone into. Um, maybe we can change, maybe the, there'll be sufficient staffing to uh, allow it. I'm only forecasting based on past, past successes and, and non-successes. Um, so I think of the bread oven as an extension of kind of Johnson's cachet of soft power and people doing, coming to like Tuesday Night Live and doing the things they like and feeling good about the community. Um, and I think it's more that than, 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 it's, than it's a wreck thing. Uh, but I, if things could change and they could run it successfully, you know, I just forecast it based on old history. And I'm not opposed, but and then perpetually, especially with the with the, with the higher that we make this summer, I'm really hopeful that we continue to drive with it or drive in the direction of the adult programs and do integrating the entire community into Johnson Way instead of just being about kids' programs. But mm -hmm. that's my vision. But you're right. You know, we're not there, so. You're dreaming in the areas I'd like. I'd like to see things. Yeah. So I. This time comes. <laughs> so even here, is there going to be a discussion with Jasmine? Yes. Okay. Okay. So we'll hear more. Okay. Uh, you guys here just for the Conservation Commission Reserve? Why don't we skip ahead to that? Okay. Then you guys don't have to stay all night in the sauna. We don't mind the. You can stay. You can. We stay. don't mind a reporter here. We're not trying to kick the press out. No, no, we don't. That's the village trustees. <laughs> <laughs> we actually get along now. Oh, that's good. Projects, yeah. good. Oh wow, that's cool. So I think we did get a letter from. Yep. Yeah. From Sue. You should have in your packet a letter from Sue. Uh, the Conservation Commission voted to hire Red Star Environmental to eradicate invasive species in Journey's End and Beard's Recreation Park. Uh, the work will be done in September, but it has been approved. Uh, what meeting was it approved at? Was it the May or June meeting? June. June, June 11th. Yeah, uh, it was approved during the 1819 uh, budget year. Uh, so they'd like to spend the money to do the work out of the 18th. So it was already in our budget anyhow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We need a motion to have over the You so move it? Yes. We have a second. Second. And just so Donna knows, the motion is to uh, commit the $1,200 in the eight, FY 18-19 budget that was dedicated for the Red Star Environmental Invasive Species Act uh, be carried over into the next year's budget de dedicated for that purpose in September. What Any other discussion? What are the species that show? Is that not weed? Um, it's mostly not weed. 
but it's really bad at Germans and um, Barberry uh, and uh, Bush Honey Suckle. Anything else? Over and got rid of, we tried to get rid of the Bush Honey Suckle at uh, Beers and we cut it, burned it, and some of it's back already, so mm -hmm. they said we need to Let us know what techniques they use and are successful. Anything else? It'll be part of it. It'll be interesting. Yeah. yeah. All those in favor, same folks saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you, sir. We're having a, um, a cutting session on July 14th up at Journey's End because what Red Start has asked us to do is to cut it all down early and then they come in in September. So on uh, Saturday, starting at 9 o'clock, everybody's welcome. Bring a lunch. Go swimming. Have some fun. CC never does anything boring or not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, I wonder if I could just share something else. We um, Let me guess. For the Historic Society. No. Oh, okay. Well, I'm conservation tonight. Okay. I was, I was <laughs> in history all, all day. <laughs> okay. Um, You're not going to put your hat on for a minute just to make no. an announcement? She's dedicated. Um, Your gathering <laughs> for conservation. Um, the <laughs> we've had a set of steps installed over at at Beards Recreation. I don't know if anybody has seen them. They look amazing. Yeah, Noah Pollock did it. He's with the Vermont River Conservancy. And one of the things that we had talked with him about was putting in an accessible trail there. And he's he looked into it. But he didn't, he couldn't get it done in this time period. Um, so we went ahead with the stairs because they really are helpful, there's no question. Um, but he sent yesterday, he sent me the cost estimates for the accessible trail, um, which would be about $4,500 as the high side. Yeah. So I'm mentioning it so that if we have some more carryover left over, if it could sit there, and we could try to write grants too, but that would be a wonderful place to have it accessible. Mm -hmm. Only down to the picnic table, not down to the water, because that's just too much. But it's such a beautiful spot to just sit there. And so that's my pitch. Okay. If you could, it's, it, he actually said $4,500, I think. Yeah, $4,500 for the top thing. The accessible trail would be about 250 feet. It would require removing topsoil, laying six inches of one and a half stone, and then two inches of three quarter crushed stone. It would be useful to rent a small walk, to rent a small walk beyond, oh yeah, a walk beyond motor and tractor to, for hauling and removing the material, so that would be done. He figures it would take a two person crew three days to create the trail, and so that's his. 2300 in labor and 1500 materials, and the equipment rental is 700. Times. And of course, the town's always been wonderful working with us with the stone, so that would save some money perhaps. So you can do your other things now. <laughs> Thank you. Is that it? That's it. Well, Tuesday night's live. We're going to have pie starting the next Tuesday. Good. All the same bakers are all lined up. Perfect. Okay, next item, uh, facility use request. Yes, we have the facility use request forms from uh, Howard Romero on behalf of the Tuesday Night Live, mm -hmm. which includes our calendar of bands. Uh, Duba Field for Sophia Bird, Beard for a uh, uh, birthday party and uh, the Lamont Housing Partnership for uh, their Harvest for Housing fundraiser, the same that they did last year. And that's uh, September 7th. Board prepared to approve the slate or no individually? Slate, Mr. Chairman. Any condition? No. Uh, you might recall that the um, 
the Moyle Housing Partnership uh, served alcohol at their uh, last time and they're intending to do so again. Uh, so we'll have a special event permit for, from uh, the Alchemist Brewery in for that. And um, in the past when we've had folks serving alcohol and at our facilities uh, for these things, we've asked them to cooperate with the Sheriff's Department. Do you want to modify your motion? Whatever, yes, what he said. Okay. Put it in my motion. Okay. Good motion and second. Any discussion? Sophia um, asked me about using check uh, to do it. And it sounded to me like she was just doing regular park stuff. Like she's going to have a birthday party in a park. So I was like, yeah. I mean, it's a park, like, go enjoy it. And then I, I did say, check with Ryan just to be sure, but it didn't seem to me like a facility use thing. Which it. We usually ask for facility use if they're kind of reserving the park. For reserving the park. Uh, you know, it comes up a lot more often with the pavilion uh, yep. at the other one. That it's, they want to have, you know, it's still a public park, but they really want to have primary use of the facility. Uh, if somebody's just going out there and they're using the park and it doesn't really matter who they encounter, else is using the park and who they encounter, uh, you know, I told Sophia that nobody else was, there was no conflict, there was no sports team or anything booking the park, uh, but she could reserve it for her use. And okay. So it's more a reservation thing? Then. Yeah. Uh, we don't charge fees for it, so it's just kind of convenient. Uh, So can I ask or ask for a friendly amendment? Yeah, that the chair signs. Authorize the chair to sign the two facility use agreements, and then the board members need to sign the uh, noise ordinance. Correct. No, I apologize. I, I grouped in the noise ordinance with the facility use. And that's accepted. Any other discussion? All those in favor, same by the same aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay, uh, do we want to go back around to the bread oven? Yes. Okay. Seems that we, Sorry if I'm late. No, okay. we, we got through a little early. But we sort of left it as we think that it, it should be some kind of a, a town entity, but uh, yes. we were going to leave it not sure if it was now. Who it was was going to reach out to you, possibly. Having it as part of the rec committee, but we're just having discussion. Interesting. We, we didn't formalize anything yet. Okay. Yeah. Kind of want to get your thought on it, whether it could be a component of the rec committee, or if you prefer that just be its own entity as far as a community rather than a committee. Yeah. So, in regard, in regards to where it is, I think that it would be. Um, I think it would be neat to have its own committee um, because it seems as though Legion Field is changing in a way. It's no longer so rec focused. And I know this because I live right across the street. People don't really recreate on it that much. Or it's not an organized, I shouldn't say, it's not an organized recreation place anymore. So, whether it is an umbrella of rec, but it kind of oversees Legion Field and takes that off of the shoulders of rec or some, um, something along those lines. But I do think that the oven itself should have its own committee because the things that we're trying to do are very specific to building that field around the oven. Uh, not building the field around the oven. You know what I'm saying. Um, kind of altering the direction of where it's headed. Um, yeah. Who's on the committee? We don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> I was told we should have one, it's so that's why I'm one. here. <laughs> yeah, right now it's me. Okay. Um, but I have several, you know, Monday nights we do a bake, and I threw it out there last week that, you know, Kyle Noose is saying that we should maybe form a committee and I had five people say, yes, I'd be on it. 
Um, so that was Luke Galately, Sophia Berard, Charlotte Ruzakrans, myself, and Ray Kenia. Kenia? Um, and I'm sure there would be, I don't know how many people need to be on a committee. I'm not, I don't, yeah. I don't know what it would, it would even look like. That's why I'm here. When I asked Kyle, what, as well as Eric, what I anticipate, Kyle told me uh, that uh, about this, and my suggestion as far as like integration to the rec committee was that uh, that perhaps one of the members well, actually wasn't the rec committee. I thought that the Tuesday Night Live there, there ought to be someone on the committee who is also a liaison. On Tuesday Night Live? Yeah. Well, I was thinking Tuesday Night Live. It was very, I, I didn't think that uh, I had a lot of brain about, uh, I thought that the uh, rec committee hadn't done this type of thing, but maybe they could change in the future. Um, yeah, yeah. But I thought that Tuesday Night Live, there was a dispute in the past, and it might be well just to facilitate communication on, on that. Um, so I just throw that out. It, I understood us to be likely saying, yeah, we think we ought to do this, let's figure out what it should be. That's sort of so usually if I'm would ask if we have a consensus on that sort of concept. Are you saying you want to liaise someone on the committee who's on the select board? Is that what no, you're saying? No, no, no. Tuesday I'm sorry. Night Live. On Tuesday Night Live. So or that would maybe, be Sophia Berard. She's on the Tuesday Night Live committee. Okay. So she well, would the be. Members, isn't that, that would be, be perfect. Sophia. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you what we're looking to do, and you can tell me what the best thing would be, whether it be marry ourselves with Rec or create our own thing. Um, selfishly, I don't want to go to a lot of meetings. <laughs> I want to just do the thing. Um, and we are trying to write grants. I've been working with Brian to write grants to make these meals at the pizza oven 100% free, so everyone who comes is a recipient. Um, and we've gotten one grant so far, but I've applied for four. Um, we just wrote a grant to get the picnic tables, as you all know. Um, but we also are experiencing some setbacks with the structure of the oven. And we've already had Andrew and Blair, who own Elmore Mountain Bread, come and look at it. And they're willing to do the work, the structural work for us. Um, but we need to have like bread, sponsor, bread oven sponsors in order to do that because we don't have a budget, because we don't have money, because this thing is brand new. And so we're trying to figure out the best way to legitimize reaching out to folks to be sponsors to get the thing fixed so we can keep doing what we're doing. So, you tell me <laughs> what <laughs> I should do. How much are the repairs going to cost you? I have no idea. I'll know more after this meet. I kind of wanted to talk to you guys before I took, before I even got a quote or anything. I just wanted to know where we all stood. Yeah. Yes, we were talking. Before this and before you expressed it on Ginger's, it was our understanding that it was really Jen who was going to sort of lead the, the management of this. I think it's a great thing yeah. that other, you know, other folks are helping them to assist. I just, I'm just wondering what her role in this would be. So I think that it's silly at this point to hold Jen 100% accountable because it's a community oven, right? So I'll, I'll, I will say that every single thing that I do that I've applied for the people who came, Andrew and Blair, who came and checked out the oven, I have kept Jen abreast 100% to everything that's been going on, and she's been giving me little nuggets of information as well along the way. But I have completely, um, she very eagerly handed the baton to me, and I very much took it willingly. Yeah. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not trying to say she said she'd do it against me stuff, but I'm saying that I think it's great that yeah. there's going to be a it's it's more than one person it really should be, and it's Absolutely. a community thing. So I just yeah. want to make sure that because of our understanding was she was going to be 
reading it that you are talking to her and all this is happening Absolutely. with her own yeah. um, approval and, and knowledge. And yes. It's not like some sort of... No, she's, she's very much in on all the emails. Yeah. So you prefer a standalone committee? I, well, okay, with that being said, a committee, how many meetings do you have to have a year? <laughs> Does it matter? No. No, no, no. no but when you're together and you make decisions around money or, yeah. um, or something, you need to do that in public meeting that's warned and yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes are published and you, right. know, you do that for the field meeting one. That's the, you know, that's the, okay. that's the pain in the neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think that as it stands right now, I would prefer to have a committee that stands alone unless you persuade me otherwise, or unless you think that I should do it a different way. I, I don't know. The way I feel about it, if people are interested in doing anything, uh, that it's my job as a select board member to make it as easy for them to do it as possible. And if you feel as if that's the easiest way to do it, I support it. You know, I would never want to come in, in the middle of, of a stick and a wrench in any work of anybody who wanted to volunteer for Johnson. So if it makes you happy that way, I support you. Okay. As, as well as meetings that your, this committee might have, I would think there would be twice a year that you might come in front of the select board what we're planning to do this year and this is what we did, you know, just to mm -hmm. sort of keep us in, in the loop uh, and for you to know that we're out here and, and uh, supportive. And it, it's easier to be supportive on something we know something about. Mm -hmm. She has five people who are willing to serve on the committee. How did we? Did I already ask that question? How many people have to be on a committee? No, we can no. set the number. You can set the number. Three, five, seven. It's, five. it's usually good to have an odd number. An odd number. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a? Do we do a, at some point a definition of what the committee is for, what their charge is, and maybe before we appoint something like that, we have a appoint a committee we ought to have. Or assign that to the committee to come back with it. Good point. I think that's how it's been done in the past. The committee has prepared the documents and this one part of it. Okay. So, what are we preparing? I'm sorry. Just me. So like how you're going to be organized. How we're going to be organized. Like What's your mission? What our mission is. Mission okay. statement or whatever. Okay. And does there have to be a chair? Like, does there have to be Yeah, these we're going to appoint you as chair. Chair, and then if there's a secretary? No. no. Are you, the committee will appoint the chair. <laughs> okay. the, the committee will make nominations. We're, we're not going to appoint a chair. Okay. Okay. Oh, I like the idea. But if you're not sure, we'll dissolve it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Jasmine, you will want to have a secretary because somebody has to take the minutes. Take the minutes. Yeah. Okay. And, and get the agenda up. Right. Yeah. And so, would we also need a treasurer, or is the town, or is Rosemary? You could. Rosemary's a treasurer. Okay. So, um, I had another question. Okay. Um, so when I when we start receiving these funds from sponsorship, that will hopefully just be rolling in. Um, <laughs> uh, will they go, will we have our own account? Uh, yes. 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 Well, okay. it'll be under Rosemary. It, the, the, everything will go to the town. Right, but um, it won't be morphed with something else. No, it it's going to be designated in the, the, the community of the Great. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Rosemary doesn't take vacation on Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> We're looking for a motion to a five member uh, stand along if the board committee uh, uh, for the committee elements. Sure. 
I make that motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. I have a question. Okay. Um, can I, before we come back to you next month with our mission and our projected, um, can I start this sponsorship call out because we really need to get the oven? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. And I can say You've that. You've been it's, doing it anyway, right? right? I know. I just don't want to. <laughs> I just don't want to do anything. No, you're you're, you're doing an excellent kosher. job. Okay. And, uh, we're very pleased. Okay. I've been looking at the court report. <laughs> You'll come back with who the <laughs> chairperson is of your committee and everything else, and the committee will decide who the chair is going to be. Okay. So, do, do you want, before we appoint committee members, do you want to put it out there for a first forum and to solicit members and maybe go through our, we have an appointment policy, which uh, is true. But, you know, yeah. Does that make sense just to make it an open thing? Sure. Yeah. But you can lobby with as many people as you want ahead of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so make a call out to say that there's a committee forming if you're interested. So in that case, Mr. Chairman, I made a, I said a five member. Mm -hmm. If she puts a call out and there's two more people that want to join and they're very capable people, maybe we shouldn't limit that. Or any overflow goes to the wreck. That's true. <laughs> well, what, what do you think? Just, just strike out the five member and just say standing committee. And use and have our normal appointing process. Right. I'm going to strike the five member. I, I don't believe we should tell them how many. You're going to withdraw your motion. What is this? I'll, I'll withdraw the whole thing. And you second. <laughs> what is a standing committee? It's your com it'll, it'll be a, a committee for the brick oven, a brick oven committee to okay. oversee the brick oven. It would be a standalone committee. You would not be a subcommittee of another committee. Right. You'd be your own committee. But what were you saying about the five member? Initially, I said five members. Yeah. And I made the motion to have it five member committee. Okay. It, it was second and if it had been approved, all you could have would be five members. When it was mentioned by Nat to put it out to front porch form or to, to go out to try to find more members or to just bring it open to the public, mm -hmm. they may be other candidates that, that you might find mm -hmm. would be very good to be on the committee. Mm -hmm. And you would wish that you could have seven, okay? then you would be limited to five because we voted on five. Uh -huh. So if we say open-ended and you can decide how many people are gonna be on your committee, then you can decide on your own. Great. And no restrictions. And then ultimately we'd have to name them and we'd name the number, but you're basically gonna look at the pool. You know, yep. And pick who's gonna be on your committee. But I didn't wanna restrict you to five. Got it. It will be restricted after we name the members. We'll set them. Depending on how, how many applicants we get, we'll, we'll set a number. We'll okay. set a number then. But I so set Overflow number wouldn't be welcome to come. Mm -hmm. Overflow wouldn't be welcome to come to a meeting. Anybody can go to a meeting. Okay. Come to a meeting. okay. I'm sorry that I'm asking very elementary questions. I just good. don't it's understand. Your questions, your questions are really good. Okay. Yeah. It's just the only ones that can vote and have a say Voting. Oh. members. Okay. And members of the community. Awesome. Got it. So I make the motion that uh, the, the uh, committee have a standing on the committee for oversight. Okay, we have a motion, we have a second. Second. <coughs> Any more discussion? All in favor seem to have the same line. Aye. Those opposed? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy, we got a big time. Jasmine, I'll be in touch about writing the post for seeking members. Okay. And uh, I've got a book on committees and roles and Great. open meeting laws and oh, yes. public documents and kind of everything else. That would be good. Okay. okay.
Great. Thank you. Thank you for your help. Well. If there's somebody in your household who was a board member or something, he might be able to help you. Help oh, yeah. Me yeah. While <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. On call compensation proposal. And we got a counter proposal? Yes. So, uh, as you recall, the, at the last meeting, the board suggested that uh, we stick to the amount of money that we have the potential for saving, uh, which would be, which would have translated to $124 and change per week uh, for three members for uh, five months. Or 22 weeks um, as compensation for winter on call pay. What the highway department has suggested is they, as a compromise to this, is they heard that our general um, our general concern was that if we went over that 125, that that money was going to have to come out of some line item. Uh, that we didn't have money in the current budget for uh, any alternative. So they've asked that what we consider for an alternative is uh, for three members for five months, 22 weeks, uh, that members who were on call were receiving uh, $100 uh, as an on-call pay and an additional uh, four hours of they had asked for comp time but uh, it would be better to track it as additional vacation time um, that would put the total compensation so first of all that would we could pay for that out of the current year's budget that would assign would basically assign a certain amount of the the compensation for being on call to the vacation time, um, where we have hours that we have budgeted. Um, what it would its total monetary value would be at at or above the two hundred dollars. Uh, per week that was initially requested. Uh, but it would come out of a budget line item in a way that we could pay for it under the current year. That sounds like a better deal than it was before. No, it's not. It costs more. No, no, a better deal. But it costs us more. It's a better deal for them, Thank you. not for us. Right. And, and uh, so, uh, no, I'm going to go back to what I said last time. That during that extensive meeting with the employees, it was supposed to even out, and we had figured a way for it to even out. So that's what they asked for, and that's what we're presenting to them. Now they want to try to get more out of it. Uh, I don't agree with that. You know, if you ask for one thing and you give it to somebody, they should accept it. They said it was going to even out. We figured a way for it to even out. And that's the way it should be. If it comes out of, without regard to the monetary aspect, if it comes out of vacation time, how does that affect the output of the work? Uh, less available time? It should. Time. This is a commitment that the employees are making, but in the past, we haven't assigned any vacation time during the winter. Uh, right now, with an additional employee, we can't afford for some people to take some vacation time during the winter. We actually would prefer if some people took some of their vacation time during the winter uh, because we are short man hours during the summer. Do we have any control on the vacation time to stay? Uh, the personnel policy allows for the supervisor to approve it. Uh, but we have some 
because of the way our hours and our banks work, uh, it would be a significant impact on morale if we didn't generally approve vacation time, especially for employees that were close to filling their bank. So it'd be hard to say, it'd be hard to actually control it because of the morale? Yes. Yeah, the, we have a control mechanism, but in practice, uh, in practice, our, our employees don't take that much time off, except right now, well, and especially in the past, when people want to take off, everybody wants to take the same time off. Uh, we need to spread that out a little bit more, and we can, if we spread it out, we can handle it, no problem. Uh, but we can't have everybody save it up for deer season and you know, lose the entire staff snowfall on the first day of deer season. Yeah. So the board would see we have an offer, they have a counter offer. But there's no offer counter offer here. Really? Uh, you're right. I mean they they ask for it like parity from one to another, and we have given them parity. So, what's there more to talk about? I mean, we can do that tonight. You know, I, I think we treat our employees quite well, really, in the summer months. They're, they're coming to work at six, and skipping their lunch, and getting done at two in the afternoon. I mean, a lot of companies don't let their employees do that gives them basically the whole afternoon uh, to do other things. So uh, we're pretty liberal on that. Uh, at least they could see us on what we're talking about, uh, considering we gave them what they asked for. Well, but just to be clear, their position was <clears throat> they had believed that they were asking for $200. They thought the $200 would be paid for. The $200 was not paid for, but I think that they would still characterize that they wanted the $200. Well, yeah, but when they requested that $200, and I... They thought, they didn't believe was, that it would be... I was, I was doing math, and Jason said, I'm pretty good with figures. I think it's going to pretty much even out for you guys if you do this. So I said, well, I'm doing the math here, I'm not seeing how it evens out, but if it evens out, definitely. And we all left feeling pretty good about that. If it all evens out, that was a pretty big qualifier for that meeting. It wasn't, this is gonna be an extra $7,500 benefit or something, you know, the $200, so. It, yeah, I, I'm not a hard time getting there. Me too, uh, and I can go way back to previous meetings when we said that when you when employees take a job with the town of Johnson, this is the way it is right now. And this was your condition of employment. There was nothing in there about on call pay or anything of the sort. Uh, this is something that has been cooked up since uh, several months ago uh, when they brought it to us. So. Uh, if we could just go back and say, no, we don't even want to do this. Uh, it was never a condition of your employment. You took the job and accepted it the way it was. So, in loop, because of that, I think that what we're doing with $124, what you were talking about a few minutes ago, that brings it even. And that's what they asked for, like that reiterated, Jason said it's going to come out the same. We did the figures and made it come out the same. I missed the duty, but it seems to me that they have said, taken the point that uh, they are, uh, we were concerned about where it came from from the budget, and I think they missed the point. The point is parity rather than where it comes from the budget. And if uh, I would say, we were willing to do parity, and uh, if they 
believe it's, it's $124. And change uh, for? Three members. Three members for 22 weeks. 22 weeks, and that equals the savings that we would, that we figure we'll get for the um, four hour, what is that? Called? Minimum call out. Minimum call out. Yeah, that we would eliminate the minimum call out for the uh, winter months. And we would reduce the minimum call out from four hours to two hours <coughs> during the summer months. So during the summer months, there'd be no on-call compensation other than a minimum call-out. And during the winter months, uh, there'd be no minimum call-out, but a certain number of our employees would be receiving uh, additional compensation for remaining on call. I think it's good to have to be paying them for being on call, I think that gets us out of the legal gray area. Not to say, please, we, we need to do that. So I'm very comfortable with that. $124, $124, $125 for engineers. Um, for three month orders for 22 months, with the concession that on minimum call pays. For winter, it reduces two hours or so. 22 weeks. 22 weeks, what did I say? I find seven months, but my hearing is so good. 22 months would just not make any sense. <laughs> so, <laughs> I apologize for sure. It's a site. That's a bad thing, moment.
but we have uh, one individual in particular who lives in town. Uh, he is a town taxpayer. Uh, he could have come tonight and pled his case. And it's always better to have somebody uh, to talk to that's uh, has skin in the game. I'm not going to change my thoughts on this. You know. I consider a deal as a deal. And they ask for the deal, and we're giving them the deal. So I make a motion that we pay $124 a week of on-call time for three members of the town highway and. Uh, Public works and that highway public works department. Three members for up to 22 weeks a year, the third pay period in November to the second pay period of April. Um, and that we eliminate minimum call out pay in the winter months and reduce minimum call out time pay. Uh, Call out time to two hours for the summons. Got a motion? We have a second. Why did it turn out to three employees instead of four? Because we hired them first. Brian is exempt. Right, but they still four out. But they've been dispatched later, they started rotating out with one person. Oh, that's a right. yeah. Every week so that they could have yeah. sanity yeah. break. Does that fit your? Are we, per is this a suggestion? Am I taking this back to them for a consultation or are we changing the this personnel is, policy? This, this is changing the personnel policy tonight. I'll second that, by the way. We have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <laughs> I, I would, yeah, it, it's, Whose side do you want? I have to split the difference. I have to, rep when I'm with you, I represent the employees. When I'm with the employees, I represent you. So I've got to represent both. I think you're doing a good job. I appreciate the vote of confidence, uh, but this is a, a difficult situation for, for this Well, one. and honestly, if you think we're really screwing up, tell us. But... You were at all the meetings. You know what yeah. we said. Uh, you know, it's just like uh, making a deal and then, oh, I don't think, maybe I shouldn't have said that on that deal. No, I don't want to do it that way. Just forget I said it. You know I mean? That's not how you do a deal with something. You make a deal as a deal as a deal. And the, the deal was made that night. Doug, you have something? Well, my thought on this is, is that, um, yeah, I think that we ought to if there's some way of not voting on this, I think we ought to uh, defer it till the next time and have them there and say, this is what we're thinking about, and this is the motion on the floor that's coming up next time. And uh, have a discussion. I think it's uh, doubtful that we change our, our position, but I think it would be politic with our employees to do so. I think that would be much more diplomatic if Understood. But if we, as was stated at the last meeting, the longer we drag this out, or the longer we don't make this change, we lose. The, then we lose saving the months. savings in the summertime months that we would accrue, and we still end up with the profit uh, offsetting expense. Right. And there's a benefit in our time to, to deciding too. So, uh, well, the motions out there. Yeah, we have a motion on the floor. Second. You don't read about the second every time. I second. We have a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor signify the same aye. 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 Those not against, nay. Nay. Ayes. Okay. You've got a letter in front of you. 
uh, for the invitation to participate in the Municipal Road Grants and Aid pro Program. Uh, we've had good success with this program in the past. Uh, Brian Crosey is looking at uh, Fox Lot Road as a site for uh, ditching improvements and general stormwater improvements. So on page three, there's a letter of intent that the select board needs to uh, needs to sign. Uh, we do expect that this would probably be done by October 31st of uh, this year. Uh, if you're interested more in the financials, the last page uh, cites the amount that we qualify for. Uh, there is a final offer that can be made, um, you know, depending on how many people sign up for it and how many letters of intent they get, they'll determine how many, how much money is going out and uh, then they'll change. But our base rate is 12700 with a local match of 3175 Which is cash or in kind? Right. For a project like this, we'd easily do that in kind. Um, you know, the, our our labor and uh, equipment rates uh, yeah, we'll easily use that up. For the board pleasure, I will move that we do this. We participate in that for the five slot. Second. Yeah, motion is second. Any other discussion? How was uh, how was the location determined that box lot was the priority? Uh, Brian and I have a, we're on the list for a new erosion inventory, uh, but using the old erosion inventory and uh, especially Brian, the road crew's general knowledge of our roads, uh, we got to keep a tally of our current priority projects and how those fit to available funds. So Fox Lot is a project that will cost around $12,000 and has a high need. So it'll make good use of the available money and it needs to get done. Thanks. Any other discussion? All those in favor, see if I can say aye. Aye. Those against me? Ayes carry. Update on drink employees. So we, uh, Meredith and I, are working on uh, the proposal, investigating the proposal for uh, joint employees. We had a meeting with Jill Muir. Uh, we're getting in touch with a couple other communities. We haven't met anybody yet who has the same situation that we're in, but we're meeting communities that are have similar setups to us, so you know, shared building, share a lot of resources, but separate town and village. Um, and we're still gathering some information. It's you know going to be a bit of a process still, but I, I wanted to let the board know that you now when this came up at the last right meeting, we had said that we didn't have time to start on it then, and we do now when we start on it. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of research with some neighboring communities and then bring it back to the board. Some of the board's uh, specific requests, uh, I know the trustees are especially interested in, uh, I believe this board was also about the joint meeting where we have to set compensation rates. Uh, you know, that that's always a contentious and difficult meeting. We'd like to get away from that. That's True, and this will generally do that, but we'll still have some potential disagreements about what the rates are for employees that we're contracting with now instead of joint oversight. Um, you know, but we may actually have less input on what the compensation rates are. Well, less impact. 
the impact is likely to be the same. It would be the same. Right. Then we would just have less oversight of it. It's a matter of picking the poison. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it's that's one of the things that came up as you know a, one something we wanted to see is you know having less uh, that being a less contentious meeting and it's I have my doubts whether that, that will actually be less contentious or not uh, because we'll still be impacted by each other's decisions we just won't have any oversight in those decisions true but the uh a town only employee or a village only employee, we as an entity will set that salary. The one we contract with is for a, you know, 20% of their time or whatever. Uh, so the difference between a 2% pay increase and a 2.5%, the impact to us is gonna be pretty minimal. It's unlikely and we could negotiate something in our MOU about you know, radical departures. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the MOU is going to be where the, we make or break this. Is how do we understand each other and how do we resolve conflicts? A question. Yeah. Right now, we're paying. We've got two joint employees. Yes. One we pay sixty forty, and the other is twenty eighty. Is it twenty eighty or seventy thirty? Twenty eighty. Okay. So. We're paying 60% of one person, 20% of the other for 80% of the person. They're paying 40% and 80% for 20% of the person. So we're actually going to have to spend 20% more for that person's salary. Does that make sense? Then no, we'll it will get compensated. For, for the for the hours that those two people are working, we're paying for. We'll pay 100 percent on the 60 percent employee, but, but we'll get at the end of the year. Right, but at the end of the year, the reconciling you know, of the books, we'll get back to that 20 percent. Is part of the contract. Part of the contract. We still want to have employees. We don't want to have the experience of somebody coming to the office and so getting turned away at the window saying, that's not my job. That's my business. Uh, so that is kind of a non-starter. Well, the member of understanding of the clubs that change. Uh, the suggestion is that what we'll probably do is leave the percentage, we'll probably propose leaving the percentages in place the first year and uh, maybe tracking hours, yeah. even kind of roughly, yeah. uh, to get an idea of that if there's a desire to get a more accurate number. I don't know how we arrived at the splits that we have now. I think it was. Yeah. Right? Didn't we just sort of win it? Check it. That's true. Yeah, so we had done a, a rough yeah. time study. It depends. Yes. Yeah, the problem is we really need to do it for a full year. Yeah. Uh, because any, it varies by a great deal from oh, week yeah. to week, month to month. Depending on what's happening, tax yeah. season. You know, our years end at different at different times. You know, in June, uh, what we're getting for our year end. You know. It's more likely that somebody's going to be working on town business. In December, we're a little bit more likely to be working on village business. Uh, we prepare for our town meeting at a different time than they prepare for their village meeting. So there's a lot. If we did a shorter study, there'd be a lot of ways to get it wrong. It's skew it one more idea. Uh, so we really need a full year cycle to get a good <coughs> idea of what uh, the split is. Eric, I have a question. Yes. Are there, at one point, you had mentioned, the board had mentioned that you didn't have job descriptions for all the employees. We, and we I'm do. wondering if that. We do. You do? Oh, okay. But that was a statement not too long ago. Because to me, that's what you need to have in order to get some of the balances to know who's doing what when. 
No, we do. Oh, okay. The memorandum of understanding, obviously, that the uh, be that the other entity would hire and you know the termination period uh, seems to be, you know how how you know what, how they can phase it out what the commitment is for. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the problem is going to be the um, the question of people who think they're in the same office working for the same employer are at differential wages. That's ultimately where you where you end up with the problem. And, uh, and uh, otherwise what we'll gain out of this is that we will not have a question of we think this person should be disciplined and the other board thinks they shouldn't. We will escape that. That's the game. Yes. Okay. Letter to V-Trans. Yes. Uh, Casey and Howard Romero have requested uh, that we send a letter to V-Trans asking them to reconsider the speed limit around the Twin Bridges area. Uh, they've talked to uh, some representatives from V-Trans who cited that there are limited sight lines in that area. Um, what is the current speed limit? 35. How much lower can you go? Well, 25. It'll be 30 or 25. Uh, it's... On um, state highway? They can set lower speed limits. They don't often. Um, okay. And I, I don't know that we would be successful. I, I think... I suspect very much... Our case here is similar. If you remember the... Uh, case that we had on the other end of on the far end of 100 C, uh, where we had some residents request uh, reconsideration of the speed limit, and we were denied our initial request and uh, granted on review. I think this is a pretty similar circumstance that the baseline reasoning that the state uses that the highway has a well designated speed limit if uh, it's the if the speed limit fits the 85th percentile of traffic. Um, and the problem is that with this is that when you have a lot of people speeding, that's counter to what makes good conditions to lower the speed limit. Uh, the state's view is that we should enforce the speed limit we have if our problem is people speeding. Um, the, the considerations that we, where we might win this on review would be that uh, the there are limited sight lines uh, with the kind of curve and the hill down. Uh, yeah, there, there are limited views there. So what are they looking for from the town? A letter signed by the select board? Yeah, they're looking for us to reach out to VTrans and ask VTrans to consider this. Um, that takes just a formal letter. Yeah. Okay. And I, I especially as, as the board knows, I now live in that area, so yeah. I would. Yeah. What's the board's what letter? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's the speed? Uh, 35. That's what the speed is now? Yes. But what what's the motion going to be? We're going to, we will we would ask them to just review ask them to review it? To just, yeah. Okay, so move. They would make a determination if they want to drop it by. Yeah. Okay. Second. The motion is second. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I do. I, I think it doesn't matter if they lower that speed limit to 15 miles an hour. People speed through there. It's dangerous. I take them away from the end of the day when I turn left on it. We need, uh, we need targeted enforcement there for sure. And it'd help if our call the sheriff's department. You would, I would buy it myself. They need to, they need to slip Ryan's yard and get people off. So noted, any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor saying aye. Say no. Aye. 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 As opposed, nay. Aye, sir. I guess, did you vote? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Legion Field, is that? 
the uh, we area. covered that when we did our facility okay. use. Uh, and that hit direct general discussion. A few things for thoughts on that. Um, getting down to so few members. Um, Heather served as our Part time rec coordinator, eight hours a week or something until this past Thursday. Um, and she identified about $2,200 worth of brand equipment that she felt was important to buy in the new fiscal year, meaning today. Um, but since there's not much of it, could be really, I thought it would, it would, both of us thought it would, would be much more comfortable if we brought the expenses to this board and this board and approved it. Though. We budgeted for the, um, that are right here, uh, the purchase orders that Heather put together um, in advance. Most of it is for soccer equipment. Um, in some cases, it made sense to buy a little bit of uh, equipment for other sports. Uh, for instance, she, while she's buying field paint for soccer, she's also buying field paint for baseball. So here are the purchase orders. I would like to move that we uh, authorize Rosemary to order. you to order these uh, up to twenty two hundred fifty dollars. We get a motion. So we moved. moved it. That moved it. You want a second? The twenty two hundred dollars you said. I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Mike moved moved it. That seconded. Any other discussion? None. All those favor say five for saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Do you have anything else? Okay. Okay. Yes. I didn't move. Um, yeah. uh, we also, there's, we have $190 from last fiscal year's budget in our archery budget that we had intended to buy arrows for. We just think that would be together. Can we earmark that money from our previous budget, last year's budget? Buy them in the next couple of weeks. Is that sure. sure? How much? $190 that we would have spent a week. Is that acceptable? Look for a motion. That's my motion. Are you making a motion? Good second. Any more discussion? We have to remember this when we reconcile the books. Yeah, book a payable okay, we'll law for. What's yeah. that? Book a okay, payable we'll law for. Book a what? Payable. Book a okay, payable. Yeah. Okay. Um, Any other discussion? Yes, a couple of quick things. Need to vote on that one. You want a pretty vote for sure. So, all in favor, say by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Thank you. Okay, now go ahead. Um, trying to get rep numbers up again. We've got a informational meeting. Um, trying to get as many people to it as possible who might be interested in volunteering for Johnson Rep on some level. It's going to be held July seventeenth uh, from six to eight p.m. in the library, and child care will be provided. Um, one of the people interested in serving is a Hyde Park resident whose child attends Johnson Elementary. Would, and my question is, would that person be eligible to serve on the committee? Is there any bylaw restriction or anything that I don't think so? Okay. I, unless it's in the rec bylaws themselves, but I doubt it. I mean, it's not like a statute requirement. No. Residency. Never turn away a volunteer. I would hate to. Even from other towns. Even from my park. Just kidding, my park. Um, <laughs> hey, for Ben Hartman. Oh, easy, easy. That's all I have. Thank you. That's all you have. That's all I show. Anybody have anything else? Uh, Mr. Chairman, a question for that. Uh, have you talked to uh, Scott about it? Yes. I think we just submitted something to Brian. Yes. We're very to study some questions that we would an outline of letters that we would like to send to the brief. Yep. Um, I met with Scott briefly today okay. uh, and went over that. Uh, I'm hopefully going to draft something up quickly. Meredith is out of town for the week. Uh, so I, I'm glad you brought it up today, but we, would, we intend to draft it. I'll share it with you before I send it out. Uh, but my intention is to send that out next week. Uh, once I have an opportunity to work on work on this with Meredith, so that each of our boards have representation. 
and the health issues will be wrong. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, we saw the email from LCPC. I told them we reappointed Duncan. Yes. Uh, did we reappoint you as transportation? You actually did not reappoint me as a transportation advisory. So, uh, so uh, I would request that you reappoint myself and Brian Krause as the alternate. So, second. Motion second. Any other discussion? Can we do that on that one? Probably not. Do I have to be reappointed as Brownfields? I don't think that's on the same cycle as, uh, as this is, but I will make sure. I mean, that brings up a good point. I'm not sure if we can make this appointment. Don't worry about it. Make sure it's on our agenda for regular right yeah. So I'll ask the motion in the second. I don't think anybody's going to send us a jail for that. No. But I would draw it. Okay. You won't pay him the big money because it that's right, they give me a reduction of pay. I mean, they'd only take one member of the jail, so. Me, me. <laughs> no, they take the oldest one. I'd go against this. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no other. Where I have just one more thing. Okay. Um, I want to thank the, the select board for making sure that the Holcomb House got clean. Yeah. It looks wonderful. I got to look at it. I wondered how it's clean out. Yes. It still doesn't look. Well, and there was a lot to get off in the very, the very, very back. Yeah. But it, it does your heart good, at least mine, when I go up the ramp and I walk in and it's yeah. really nice. It looks nice. So thank you. Well, does it look like a good target for cabbage night? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did we sign a copy of the letter of intent? No, we just we just voted on it. Uh, there's spots for three representatives. Three senior people do it. Okay. Good night. Night. See you. Yes. What did they find? Uh, they find more problems on the other side of the building than they thought? No, actually, I think it's been fairly this, good. Uh, this has gone well so far. Uh, our only pitfall so far has been uh, the, I don't have the details yet, but there was something uh, that made the air conditioning more difficult to hook back up and to turn on. It's not on up here right now because the a lot of these windows are sealed, but if you look out at some of the other ones, mm -hmm. they're not. Um, but the, it took longer than expected and more man hours to get the AC back on. Uh, and I don't have the damage from that yet, but I'm expecting that to be. And these are all new windows identical to the, the yep. ones behind us. That looks good. Yeah, the windows are well, $50 more expensive this year. <laughs> They're the same, the same windows. windows. Okay, nothing else. Stand adjourned. <laughs>